Hey gang, Mocha Boy here. Welcome back. So uh, we are wrapping things up here at Reddit Force with this current academy. Um, everyone who tr everyone who participated, or at least was eligible to participate, was uh, was successful in in adopting the strategy. And you know, at least our goal of getting people introduced to the strategy so that they could uh, you know tweak the compositions, you know, tweak the spell loadouts, uh, you know, figure out what works for them and in what situations. All of that was successful. And uh, you know, the end result is we we now have a clan full of Town Hall nines and Town Hall tens. That w of Town Hall 9s that know how to hit Town Hall 10s, and Town Hall 10s that know how to hit uh, Town Hall 11s. And uh, I mean, that was the goal from the start with this. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at those three replays. So the first attack we're going to look at, this is coming in from Tabula Rasa, and he is taking on a fairly upgraded Town Hall 10. They are only level 1 Infernos, but he's rocking a, a level 14 BK and a 20 AQ, but he does have his Max Healers and his Mass Falks. Um, now notice in, notice in this uh, the, in this configuration, this derivative of a Dragon flower base the the spacing of the um the defenses within each of the pockets, you know, because there's no spacing, uh, every single one of those buildings is within range from the perimeter uh, you know, of the by, by the AQ, with the exception of that last air defense, which he could have gotten at it had he uh, had he wall breakered his way into that core. But uh, in this particular case, he has the AQ moving up to meet with the coring team. The healers come in under some uh, some air defense fire there, but no, nothing too crazy because once he gets access to the core with his Valks, he can go in there, take out that first inferno, take out the town hall, uh, move on to process the, uh, the, the the clan castle and then just go in for extra innings and extra an extra DPS percentage this is about as textbook as it gets with these types of attacks if we needed someone to run in and uh, take down a town hall 10 for two stars these guys definitely have the skills to be able to do it and, and mind you the, you know, the biggest threat to to these types of attacks is keeping the AQ up long enough for her to bank enough percentage and then keeping those healers or, or you know getting enough use out of those healers so that uh, you know they can either recharge some of the interior core troops or, or just keep the AQ up long enough to make sure that she's getting the uh, the 50%. So great job there with that attack. All right, so this next attack, this comes in from Mason Killer. Mason's actually a visitor from uh, from TWB Terps Win Big. I'll post a link to their uh, to their YouTube channel down below. Um, he's coming in here with his Town Hall Nine, and he attacks the flat side of this base. So again, single target Infernos, level one, uh, you know, level one, nothing too crazy here. But he does open up with um, a Queen Walk on the on the southwest side. This doesn't really, you know, again, in in this application, the the Queen is really just about all all about banking percentage uh, safely on the outside. Side. In, in this particular case, he, he used, if you look at the spacing of the buildings, was able to get the inner core as well as the uh, the second layer of walls with that quake to get his uh, to get his giants, to get his valks, to get everything into the core. And what he did was he attacked from the opposite side of the base, uh, opposite the uh, the clan castle, and used them to drag his valks into the core. Uh, you know, there was a natural chain of defenses leading into the core, so his giants were able to flow into there no problem. I mean, this isn't the best nemesis base that I've seen, but you know, these ring these resource ring bases can be a real problem if you don't know what to look for and you, if you can't spot those those special configurations where there's a trail of buildings that'll take your defense led troops into the core of the base so this is just another example of that and again he's running with a 13 bk and a 20 aq uh, you know this is no small feat to be able to take on these types of bases especially in, in you know, considering the fact that he's already started his upgrade progression uh, the, you know this this base owner has already started his upgrade pr progression so um you know the, the way that script works especially with uh especially with your AQ, they're free to go in and clear the rest of the base once all the other defenses are down. So great job there. All right, so the last uh, the last replay we're going to look at, this is coming in from Walker. Walker is one of our um, developing Town Hall 10s. Uh, this guy is a beast. Um, you know, just give it up to you straight there. The guy is a beast. He knows how to he knows how to three star Town Hall 10s without any trouble. And uh, he's recently started taking on the Town Hall 11s just to see uh, just to see how far he could push his ability. So, uh, in this particular replay, he took on a, a yet another Dragonflower derivative. Um, not e not an easy base. I mean, this is um, this is about. I mean, he he attacked the max base as a town hall ten. And, uh, you know, these are always tricky to attack if you don't approach them the right way. Now, if you look at the air defenses and, and their uh, their distance from the wall, they're within that requisite four-tile four distance for the AQ to take take them out. And he's going to get her moving up towards that top pocket where the uh, where the Eagle Artillery is. And then once those defenses are keyed in on the Archer Queen, get some wall breakers in there, get her access to that compartment so that uh, she can take out a second air defense and then on to, both, you know, the CC and the Eagle Artillery. With 30 seconds of planning, that he could that he could even do this is just amazing. And then one other cool thing that he does here that uh, I hope you pick on pick up on is that he used the interior core heroes to drag the the, the Valks through the wall. 
once they're grouped up like that, you know, there's nothing to stop them from, from breaking their way through. And then that last jump gets them into the core to take out the uh, remaining inf Infernos and everything else. Uh, just an absolute beast of an attack, considering you only had 30 seconds to plan. I, we're, you know, we're going for the, the two-star here that was the exercise, and he was able to just, uh, he was just able to wreck, wreck this max base. So, fantastic job there. Looking forward to seeing, uh, seeing your stuff in Clan Ward. So I do want to thank you for following along and, uh, you know, watching all the stuff that we put out on the playlist that we, what we wanted to prove was that it was possible to be able to do these with, uh, you know, to do these types of attacks reliably with the right strategy. And we needed to train up our members uh, to, to be able to do this because it's going to help them both in their, in their farming as well as their war, uh, as well as their war play. You know, you, Town Hall 10s, at least as far as I was concerned, when I was running this attack, this was my this was my bread and butter attack. I didn't even bother trying to uh, to barch uh, to, you know trying to barch bases. I just flat out three starred everything and took all their loot, and uh, that's what was able to fuel my my Grand Warden pro uh, progression, and um, you know that's what's been carrying me through through my wars. So, you know, great skill to have. If you have any questions, you know, drop them in the comments below. If there's anything in particular that you want to see or details that you want us to cover, again, just drop those down below, and uh, we will see you on the next episode.